my friend Aaron got a 3D printer. Hello there. And since I'm visiting, we thought it would be fun if I got to print out some stuff and then maybe I'll end up buying one of my own. First of all, we gotta find something to print. So this is Thingiverse. It's one of the big ones, I would say. You can find most stuff you'd want on here. So you said your printer right now has gray... Um, resin. Resin. Yeah. Because I also bought some other fun resin for us to use. I'm excited. <laughs> But since we're doing gray and there's a thing that I want to make that we will have to paint, let's look for a companion cube. Well, there we go. Oh, look at that. That's like a, a deck box, it looks like. Oh, this one has gears. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> You're like, Sorry. this is the one. I'm like, no, I want game accuracy. Okay, I think this is the one. All right. What do we do now? Let me just go through the details because sometimes there are instructions and important information. Doesn't look like this one has that, probably because it's a pretty basic shape at its core. It's a cube. So typically for a shape like this, where it's a pretty basic shape, you don't need to add supports. I might want to add them anyway, just because that might make it easier to get off the platform, which means I think we might have to scale this down ever so slightly. By default, it added this little bottom platform thing with mm -hmm. a little bit of a beveled edge, which makes it easier to kind of get unstuck yeah. and make sure you don't damage the actual print. Dang. There's a nice button up here that will let us hollow it. So now it'll play us a nice little animation. <gasps> oh. So now that this is hollowed and supported, we have to click the slice button. The program takes this model essentially and turns it into the individual layers that it's going to print. So we can actually scroll through and see each oh layer. Oh my god. Now we got to move that to this flange drive. Cool. Now we have it. And we're done with the computer portion of our adventure. Hey Aaron, what are you doing now? Putting on gloves because safety equipment is important when dealing with something toxic like uncured resin. What's that? This is the reservoir of resin. What's that? This is a print that failed. Oh no. What makes a print fail? Sometimes bad luck sometimes inadequate supports. If it's a particularly concave shape, the liquid resin can get stuck in there and create like a suction-y effect. Or sometimes if your printer is not aligned properly, that can also cause problems. So it can be many things and I am still learning. So because the last print failed, I'm just going to loosen these screws that are kind of keeping this still and then re-level the platform to make sure it being not level is it the reason that the print failed. And there we go. It's also very important to print in a well-ventilated area, which is why we're in the garage where I have an air filter running and we have some vents in the wall. And there it is, Shayna's companion cube. Wow. Oh. Boop. Oh my God, that is kind of cool. Time to go get brunch? Yes, most indubitably. <laughs> I don't see a cube. Mm. It didn't work. What do we do? So there's a few reasons prints can fail. So I'm gonna do some troubleshooting now. It could be that we didn't add a drainage hole. Um, we but, know we didn't do that. Right, but that's not necessarily the problem. It's okay. something we should address regardless. But if very little of it printed, and I don't see much, if any, on the build plate, so there might be a little bit down here in the tank. It could be an exposure issue, meaning the screen below that exposes it to UV light is not working properly, which I doubt because it's fairly new. But if that's the issue, we're kind of screwed. It could also be a contamination issue, meaning like if debris got in there, it could have trouble ad adhering the layers. So what we're gonna do is also filter the resin. So it looks like at least part of it printed, but didn't stick to the little base on the build plate. Here's the support base we added. So it's probably not an exposure time issue and the base stuck to it. With everything else accounted for, we went back to the computer to edit the model for the cube and to add drainage holes. And then we tried printing the cube again. It didn't work again. What if it, can you do the, the test one that came with it? That's a very good plan, but I have to clean first. Okay. Good, bad news, bad, good news. The test worked, which means there's something wrong with the cube. I guess that's better than something being wrong with the printer. And it's less expensive than something being wrong with the resin. Why does it? I don't know. There we go. Test prints. Look, it worked. So just do what you can to kind of get under there. It's very hard. Like. Nice. Yeah, much easier. Ooh, look at it. 
It's oh, a this one broke. So the problem is with the cube. But for now, it's the next step. So now you can, I would pull up on the little metal, just pull that sucker up. And oh, like a fry it, basket. Yeah, and put it right in the middle. And then just put it back in? Yep, yeah, just put it back in and then press the button on the front. It's already set to time. And now put the lid on. Because it's alcohol, we don't want it splashing anywhere. And that is step one in the post-processing. Well, it's also going to update the cube design. Yes. Hey, Aaron, hey, Aaron, tell the camera what you've discovered. <laughs> One of the settings in here got changed, and it looks like the model's actually hovering half millimeter or millimeter above the support structure, which would explain why it didn't we're print. successfully printing the support structure and nothing else. <laughs> yes, lift the fry basket and just put that in the bowl there. You air dry for probably about 10 minutes or so, and then we can transfer it into the UV curing station. I thought the chopsticks were a good way to do this. I love it. And now that is uh, fully cured and therefore safe to handle. Ta-da! Yeah, and we're good to go. Cool! Uh, time for the cube? So do you remember every step or do you want me to kind of... Let's see what I remember. Okay. Gloves. You can see the holes on top. You can see the fillers. Okay, now I have to break it off. Did it break or is it good? It's good. Okay, then we're fine. <laughs> Spillages can be cleaned. It's floating. Oh yeah, because it's hollow. It has to fill with the alcohol before it'll sink. Cool. Oh, I feel it happening. Now we gotta let that drain. Just make sure the holes are down in the bowl too, just in case. Tiny little things, okay. Remember, the bottom part's the support, so you can just kind of, yeah, break it right off. Be fine. Oh, it's so pretty. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Ignore the bottom one that didn't print right. All the others are perfect. We're gonna super glue the holes. Where's the super glue? Inside. We got some fancy super glue. Now we paint. So first of all, my companion cube is done drying. I think it's a good seven out of 10. Like I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm just saying that I love it so much. And now it's just time for the duck. Do you want to try to explain this? There is a popular variant of chess. I think it was mostly popular maybe like a year ago or a little less, I don't know, called duck chess in which a new piece, the duck was introduced that both players could move on their turn to block the other players moves and so it added just a new layer of strategy and thought it, you know and uh, something that hasn't been figured out by computers yet and I know James was into it we played a game when I visited you I don't remember what we used as a duck but now we have an official duck piece once we remove the supports I think it'll be fantastic uh, I think you're right it's just gonna because um, that's where it's thicker We have poured out the old resin, filtered it, put it back in its bottle. We've cleaned out the reservoir and the uh, toppy thingy. The build plate. The build plate. And now it is time to pour in the new resin. And we have adjusted the exposure time and the lift height for the print based on the manufacturer's recommendations. Wonderful. Well, it built. Oh my God, that looks so sick. Oh, 
Oh my god. Yeah, it's upside down now. I am very scared of removing this, actually. Well, because of all the supports, if, you know, luckily it, it should be fine. Oh yeah, like flipping a pancake. Oh. oh my goodness. Look at those teeth. Look at that, you're a pro. And now, the water is turning blue. <laughs> It's alcohol, but yes, it's a good thing we're washing it then. That means there was definitely extra resin on there. Print? Yep, it's called- Air Dragon Sword. Yep, there you go. First, we're going to set up the skull to dry. It is looking very cool. And then it also looks like the sword is done. Oh, sword, sword, sword. Oh no, it broke away from its supports. Did it print right or is it just angled or is it need it to be reprinted? Correct. Okay. It well, still looks good to me. It's just bandy. Just bandy. I mean, it's, oh, it's coming off like butter. Yeah, that's the advantage of the beveled support raft. Boom, boom. I'm like a reverse lady of the lake. It was. I've, I've had a really good time playing with the 3D printer. Yeah, uh, I'm glad this project helped help me figure out what was going wrong with my prints because I've been trying a few recently and they weren't working even though they were before and I was getting, uh, I was losing my mind just a little bit. bit. The floating cube. The floating cube. Figured it all out. Who would have thought? So I'm definitely excited to try out Blender myself, make a cool like potion bottle or a model of one of my Tales of Monday magic characters. And then, you know, naturally I will send them to you and you'll print them out for me and then you'll ship them up to Seattle. Of course. <laughs> no, but honestly, this was amazing. I love getting to try out new projects and it's, it's just great when my community sort of has the materials already and, and allows me to try it out. So thank yeah. you. Well, thank you for ordering cool sparkly blue resin. Yes, I hope you get a lot of use out of it. Yes, I'll have to think of new blue projects. <laughs> if you liked this video and want to see my next step on my 3D printing journey, be sure to subscribe and hit like on the video. Maybe leave a comment with your favorite printing projects. Yeah, let us know if you have any fun ideas to print in blue. Yes. <laughs> especially, or anything, but especially blue. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I'll see you real soon. Cheers. Bye.